everybody. Welcome back to another Nature's Always Right video. This is my update to my compost making video. So if you haven't seen that one, I'll put a link down in the description. And that one's all about how to build the compost pile with the right layers, the amount, right amount of carbon and nitrogen so that it gets to a very high temperature. And I even talk about Bokashi composting as well. Today's video is all about how to turn the pile, how to measure the pile, analyze it, make sure it's staying healthy. And I'm going to walk you through the uh, about seven week process that it took to turn a brand new compost pile like this one that I just made yesterday that's up at 150 and how to maintain those highest temperatures and get the pile to break down as quickly as possible and as healthily as possible, keeping it aerobic the entire time. All right, let's go check out the pile. It's now day two, almost 48 hours later, and we're now up to 158. So this is amazing. This is exactly where we want the temperature to be it's max temperature. So 160 is the maximum temperature that you would ever want your compost pile to be because above 160, you're killing off the beneficial microbes. But at 160, we're killing all weed seeds and all pathogens. But 150 to 160 is like the maximum safe zone. Um, also, this higher heat is gonna allow the pile to break down much, much faster. Tomorrow, we'll turn the pile and we'll see where the temperature's at. Uh, it may stay stable at 160 or uh, it may drop a little, but we'll see. It's crazy hot. If I smell the tip, it smells good. It doesn't smell anaerobic. But I think we should definitely turn it tomorrow. So you can see how much actual heat is in this. Oh, God. It hurts my hand. I can't. It'll literally burn my hand if I put it in there. But there's a ton of steam coming out of there. And this pile's looking awesome. It's going to break down quick. So tomorrow we'll come back and turn it. 70, almost 72 hours, three days since we created the pile. Looks like it just dipped below 150 to like 149. So now it's time to turn it. It started to cool down, so it reached its max temperature after 48 hours. So guys, when I turn my pile, I try to do it as easily as I can because it is a bit of work. So what I'll do is I'll start on one side and I'll move that side and flip it over. And I'm always flipping so that the top becomes the bottom and the bottom becomes the top. And even when you're doing the pitch work, you could even twist it a little bit and that helps to just mix it. You're just trying to infuse as much oxygen into this pile as I can, get the layers mixed together so that any remaining nitrogen content is mixing with that carbon. So I'll just flip, move to the next like foot section, flip, flip. But as I'm going, I'm gonna determine if it needs more water. And remember, we're looking for that wet sponge type of feel, which this, it's so hot, I can barely go down an inch. It's pretty good. I may just spray as I turn. I'll use a sprinkler like this to spray into the pile as I'm turning it, and that saves me some time. So, I'm gonna set this up. I also like spraying it with this sprinkler because as you're turning it, there's no better time to get to get things evenly moist. If you're watering from the top, then it's a little bit more difficult, and it takes longer and uses more water. Uh, once the pile's already wet, it just needs a tiny bit to, to ensure that the moisture stays really good. Hopefully you can see all that steam coming off. As soon as I move the pile, I get a big blast of heat. I'm using my sense of smell to tell me what's going on with the pile. If it's anaerobic, I'm going to be smelling some real gross smells, but I'm not smelling that. I'm just smelling a real nice composty, ammonia-y smell. One of the byproducts of the composting process is ammonia gas. Okay, I'm noticing this is a little drier, so I'm going to shoot it with some water. I'm trying to make this pile as big as it can so that the center core can heat up as much as possible. The bigger the core, the larger the hot area will be inside the pile. All right, so then my last step is just to scrape up all the remaining stuff that I can't get with the pitchfork. You know, if some of your green waste or eggshells fell out, try to get those back in. Inevitably though, there's always something fresh that pops out like this grapefruit peel. Okay guys, so here's the final pile, what it looks like, all stacked back up. The moisture level's pretty good. Maybe I could run a little bit more water on top, but I think it's gonna be fine. So 
what we'll do is just cover it with burlap like before and we'll check it again tomorrow morning and it should be heated right back up hopefully up to like 140. I doubt that it'll go back to 160 since we probably burned up a lot of that high high nitrogen stuff already. I'm real hopeful it'll get back to 140 or somewhere around that. Now the pile's completely covered and the moisture will be able to hold in there very well. Just got a brick on there to hold it. Compost thermometer's already in there and we'll come back tomorrow. It's now the fourth day and when I checked earlier it was up to 132. Looks like it's cooling down a little bit more. So now it's at like 130. So still at a great temperature. Moisture contents, okay, the top is a little dry. It could be a little bit more moist. So we'll watch the temperature. We'll come back tomorrow and see what it's looking like and then we'll either turn the pile and get it. We'll probably turn the pile and then add some more moisture. Day five and check that out. It heated back up and it's back at 140, which is really awesome. So I just needed that extra day to heat back up and now it's gonna sit here at 140 and we'll see what it does. So once we see it start going back down again, or if we test and smell that it smells anaerobic, then we'll turn it. So I'll see you tomorrow. All right, so it's day six. We're still sitting at 140. So because we're sitting at our max temperature right now, we're just gonna let it sit. So basically we're going through a process of raising the pile to the maximum temperature, letting it sit there. Once it starts to cool down, then turn it again and that will put more oxygen into the pile and help it to heat up again to the highest possible temperature let it sit and we'll continue that process and that's going to help the pile break down at the quickest possible speed i just want to show you guys that here's an example of a kind of a failed pile that i did and just to give you guys encouragement that you know, anybody can mess up a pile and it's, you know, it's pretty easy to do. So just don't beat yourself up. It takes a long time to get very good at composting. So what I did wrong with this pile is I didn't have enough high nitrogen stuff, enough green material in order to get the pile to heat and to keep it at heat for a long period of time. So this pile went up to 130 for like five days and then we turned it and then it cooled down and then never really heated back up. It just stayed around 100, 110 for a very long time for the last month. And I'm not happy with that. I'm not happy with the breakdown going on. So you can see, you know, some of it's turned to some soil. It's warm. There's microbial activity, but it's just so low that it's going to take a very long time for this straw to break down. Okay, so that's just no good. And, you know, there's obviously very low risk of pathogen. But because I didn't keep it at my temperature that I wanted for such a long time, which is 130 for at least 15 days, then what I've decided is I'm just going to throw most of it in with the chickens. They're going to get to process it and eat stuff and find worms. And they'll mix that in with the rest of the bedding in there. And then it'll just become even nicer bedding for me to use later when I build another compost pile. Then I'm also going to use some of this to inoculate the next compost pile that I'll put right here. That'll be built this weekend or the next. And then I'm also going to build another small pile in my box here. So I'm using it for inoculant there as well. So that's what I'm doing with this failed compost pile. I could let it keep going and in about another two, three months it would break down enough to use. But because I need to have things happen much more quickly and because I'm doing this commercially and I'm selling food to people. I want every single compost pile that I make to be excellent and to reach the temperatures for the right amount of times that need to happen to ensure 100% pathogen death. Okay, I think it's day eight today and today it's at 131 it looks like. So almost down to 130 and I'm just gonna go ahead and turn it today. Third turn, you know, the USDA organic practices is to keep it above 130 for 15 days and turn it five days within that time. Now that's for big, large commercial loads of compost, so there's more strict standards. But hey, if we can pull that off in our backyard, then man, that's pretty cool. Just gonna go ahead and turn it and gonna observe the moisture too. So usually the outer few inches is dry after a couple days, but inside it's still pretty wet, but I can tell it does need a bit more moisture. So as I turn it, I'm gonna run a sprinkler on it, and then I may run my oscillating sprinkler on it at the end just to add some more water to the top to help it thoroughly soak through. All right, so let me give you one more really good tip for getting hot compost, and that is to use carbon material that is already broken up quite a bit. 
So small leaves like this are really great. Large straw or a fresh bale of straw like that, that is not the best carbon. It will take much longer to break this stuff down. So I recommend you could either shred this up or what I'm using is straw that has already been processed by the chickens. So they've chopped it up, they've scratched it, they turned it into much, much smaller particles which allows uh, the bacteria to feed on it much more efficiently, allow more air in there, and all these different variables add up to a hotter pile in the end. So having, you know, smaller carbon pieces is one of the key components. Now, the, your green components don't really matter as much. They can be a large size, unless it's like a large vine uh, stem or something like that. That would be more of a woody material anyways. But yeah, large leaves, like you, it doesn't matter. You don't have to tear up the greens. That's not really necessary. It just kind of melts once the heat gets built up. Still holding strong at about 128. Doesn't seem to be heating up any more than that. We're at about 122 it looks like. So it's starting to cool down from yesterday. I'm just gonna smell it. it. Smells neutral. Doesn't smell anaerobic. It's got plenty of moisture. So let's turn this thing for sure. I wanna get more air in there. Also, as I went through this pile, I was using my sense of smell to see if there's any anaerobic areas, and there was not. It smelled great, it just smelled neutral, uh, smelled woody, and these are the type of smells that we want, which is basically none. No gross smells in there, so that's also a great sign that we turned it at the right time. The temperature and the smell combination tell us we turned it at the right time. I just want to show you another example of what you can use as a cheap cover for your compost pile. So there's obviously burlap, or just a big piece of cardboard, or multiple pieces, and it's all free. It's day 19 of this compost pile, and we're down to about 100 degrees, and 13 of those days we had temperatures above 130, which is excellent. So we almost made it to the 15 day mark that the large scale organic producers have to do. So I'm super satisfied. If we look into the pile, we've still got lots of moisture, it's got that wet sponge, wrung out sponge texture. Um, once we turn it, I'll just probably do a you know five, 10 minutes of sprinkler over the top, maybe five minutes over the top, just to get the outer edges, because these uh, outer four inches always dry out. Let's see, if we look deeper into the pile, you know, yeah, it's not very hot. Things have broken down quite a bit, and there is some soil in there now. Now it's down to 102, and essentially I think that we've just exhausted up all of our higher nitrogen stuff, um, but the pile is really breaking, has broken down pretty well. Yeah, pretty happy so far, and basically now the pile is going to be cold, so now I'll just kind of turn it, you know, every five days or so, and add more moisture as needed. Recently made another pile about a week ago. This one had two buckets of Bokashi in there. Got it over 150, it's still staying at 140 now. It's been there for like six days. Yeah, I just can't say enough good things about Bokashi. That's what has helped me to achieve the highest temperatures in my backyard and just kind of a smaller pile. So I can't wait to make my Bokashi video for you guys. So whoever's interested can start doing it because it's just an amazing and easy way to process certain waste. Okay, so it's August 6th today. It's like about 27 days, almost a month later. So let's check out the pile. Already you can see one of my big problems with how I create my piles is I don't have carbon that's chewed up enough. So the, the smaller the carbon is the better. Getting in here, feels a little dry right now. And yeah, because I only measured about 90, so that's probably part of the reason but it's starting to convert and we just need to get more water on it and get it turned. And the next month it's gonna really rapidly break down the soil. All right, so after this pile went all the way down to 90, I turned it and got it moist again and now it's back up to 100. So now that the pile is cold, what I really love to do is add earthworms to piles. What I'll do is I'll come into where my uh, worm castings are and just pull out 
a ton of worms in the areas where there's a lot and I'll take them out and then just add a few handfuls each time I rebuild the pile. I'd add them in at the end. They help to break down the pile, add more beneficial bacteria. And then in the end, when you go out to spread this into your garden beds, then there's a bunch of worms inoculated in there as well. So then you're adding worms out to your garden beds in addition to the extra nutrients. It's another great way to incorporate red worms into your soil building process. So I got a decent amount of worms and I'm just gonna add that throughout the pile. And I'm just going to bury them about two inches down and that'll just protect them from the sun and they can get going in there and go wherever they want in the pile. Lay eggs in there and create more worms. And in three weeks we'll have a much bigger population. And I just want to, you know, put chunks of them around the pile so that there's, you know, a dozen or a couple dozen worms uh, so they can mate and create their eggs. Here's the actual compost. It's getting real good there. Another three weeks and it's going to be beautiful. I just added about five minutes worth of moisture. Just need a tiny bit more. I'm gonna wrap this back up and keep turning it every five to seven days. So, you know, the more often you turn it, it's gonna help it break down a little bit quicker. So, you know, every five days is better. August 23rd, and we've got about two weeks to go until we're two months in. So, right now the pile is now cool, sitting at about 90. But the moisture looks good. It's more of these beetle larvae that we can give to the chickens. It's starting to really break down now, really look good. You know, the straw is the one thing, so you know, I'd love to be able to switch away from using straw if I could find some of the smaller carbon source. Today is the final day. I'm now happy enough with this compost pile to start using it. It's now been cold for a couple weeks. This pile has been going now for almost eight weeks, which is my mark where I'm, I'm usually finished with it. And I know that it's finished just by looking at it and by smelling it also. Now, you are seeing a little bit extra carbon because of that straw. And you know, we've talked about how shredding the high carbon content will really help it break down quicker. Because if you could imagine all this straw was broken down as well, then it would just be soil. Because that's really all that's left to break down in here is this straw. And it's almost there. So not much more to go. I could totally go out um, and use these in my beds now. I'm gonna remake some beds today and uh, reseed them. So these are fine to go out. This straw will just continue to break down uh, under the ground or on top of the ground. And you know, the earthworms out there will eat it. The different life will eat it. As I've put this stuff out on my beds, it disappears uh, after the planting, so it doesn't take long. So to figure out if it's ready, let's take a look. So first of all, the smell. It should smell like soil smells, right? So it should not have any poop smell whatsoever. It should smell very neutral. It should smell woody, earthy. And here's what it's looking like. You can see that it's mostly soil except for that little bit of straw in there. If I wanted to use this to start seedlings and stuff, I would really need to strain it well. This is going to go out onto my beds since it has a little bit more thicker material. This is another pile that I started within a week of the other one. And this one broke down even nicer, I feel like. It's about the same. But I think I took the straw from the inside of the chicken coop. And the inside of the chicken coop has straw that's much more broken down because the chickens have been processing it for more time. So now what I've changed in my process is I'm actually not even taking any material from this outer coop. I kind of just let this do its thing out here. And I'm now I'm just taking the straw from the inner coop so that I'm getting the most broken down straw possible. And what I'll do is actually, when I rake this out and make a new pile, what I'll do is I'll bring in an entire straw bale to start with and then another two weeks later I'll add another full straw bale and then I don't add any more straw to the system so that it can collect as much poop as possible and they can have another month or so to break down all that straw to a further degree. If I'm adding straw constantly, then I'm constantly adding in the new less broken down straw which makes it more difficult. Now, I'm not having a smell issue with my chickens of their manure or anything. You know, occasionally you do have to add in a little more straw if it's getting too stinky, but I haven't had too much of a problem 
waiting long periods between adding in more straw as long as I've added a ton of it in the beginning so that as they, they can mix it up and do their thing, they will keep turning the manure underneath the straw and then that will kill the smell. So basically now guys, I'm gonna let these keep composting so that the straw continues to break down. But what we'll do is use these out in the beds today, the, the two beds I'm gonna remake, and then they'll just continue to break down. And what I like to do when they're close to um, being used for soil blocks or making seedlings, what I'll do is instead of turning it one more time, like today, today's the day to turn these, but instead of turning them, what I'm gonna do is actually just take one of these piles over to my seed starting area over there. So you've probably seen in my other videos, this is where I put all my finished soil. So instead of turning it over there, I actually need to bring it over here for use soon. So instead of turning it, this the turn will be moving it to the new location. So that's something I like to do just to stack the functions, make it more efficient. I'm turning it while moving it to my new location all at the same time. All right, thank you guys so much for watching the composting video. I really hope it helped you understand some more of the concepts and understand what makes the pile heat up and cool down, what makes it go anaerobic and aerobic, and all of those issues in between. And if you have any questions, please ask me in the comments. You know, making compost is not easy and it takes a little while to get good at it. So just keep working hard and keep practicing and you're gonna get it. I do plan on making more composting videos in the future just to give more examples and show more situations that I come across when I'm making compost. I hope that you guys are able to make just some grade A amazing compost and inoculate the beneficial microbes out into your garden and farm and adding in all those essential nutrients that your plant and all the soil life needs so that your plants thrive.